let's take a look at the integrated rate law for a second order um, rate law type of a situation. In this case, when um, a reaction is said to follow second order rate law kinetics, that means the rate is dependent on the concentration of reactant A squared, or to the second power. So here we have our reaction rate expressed as negative dA dt, the reactant that we're curious about monitoring, and it is um, equal to K times A to the second power. That's why it's second order, because the exponent is 2 here. All right, let's do, let's integrate um, this equation. First, let's pull the variables um, to the same side. So it's negative dA um, divided by A squared equals um, K dt. And we will um, multiply both sides by negative 1. Whoops. That will leave us with dA over a squared is equal to negative k dt. You can integrate both sides and recognize that the integral of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x. And so solving um, this integral, we end up with um, negative 1 over a at some time t minus a negative, which would be plus 1 over a at time 0 equals negative kt. And I can rewrite this equation in the um, bringing the 1 over a to the other side uh, into y equals mx plus b format. And it's going to be equal to, let's do it right up here, um, negative 1 over a at some time t is equal to negative kt minus 1 over a naught. So we'll multiply that whole equation by negative 1. And we end up with 1 over a at some time t is equal to kt plus 1 over a naught. So this equation, now it's in the y equals mx plus b format, tells me that the y-intercept should be 1 over a naught and that the slope should be k. And um, we should have a straight line when we plot 1 over the concentration. And so um, this is the form of the equation in the y equals mx plus b b format. So if you plot 1 over a versus time, you get a straight line with a slope of k. This is one way to determine k. So here you'll see an example. In this case, it's a particular compound. 1 over the concentration of that compound um, versus time. You get a straight line where the slope is equal to k. Now let's take a look at um, an example of um, using a second order rate equation. In this example, um, it says determine the rate constant for the following second order reaction. 2A gives B plus 2C. Given that the concentration of A decreases from an initial concentration of 2.5 times to the minus 3 molar to 1.25 times to the minus 3 molar in 100 seconds. So we know um, two concentrations. We know the time elapsed. And from that information, and our equation, we can calculate um, the value for k. So we'll use the um, form of the equation that um, 1 over a at time t minus 1 over a times 0 is equal to kt. I'll plug in what the information that I have, and that is 1 over um, the time at t was 2, let's see, no, no, let me see. Time uh, was 1.25 times 10 to the minus 3 molar minus the initial, which was 2.5 times 10 to the minus 3 molar equals k, it's what we're looking for, times 100 seconds. That's the time that has elapsed. So this is molar, molar. And um, in this case, the value of k, when you do the math, is 4 and the units are 1 over second molar or inverse second inverse molar. So you can see if you know the integrated rate equation you can find information very quickly and very easily. The last thing to look at for the second order rate equation is just the equation for the half-life and to solve for the half-life you can use the equation 1 over a at time t minus 1 over a initial concentration equals kt, 
and we're going to, um, at T1 half, we know that the concentration is equal to 1 half the initial concentration. So we can plug that in, 1 half the initial concentration minus 1 over that concentration equals KT, 1 half. And for um, the half-life of the second order equation, then we end up with 2 over a naught minus 1 over a naught. That equals 1 over a naught um, equals k times t1 half. So divide both sides of the equation by k, and you'll find that t1 half is equal to 1 over k times a naught. And again, in this case, for the second order equation, the half-life is dependent on the initial concentration. It is dependent on the initial concentration. So that means that as the reaction proceeds, um, the half-life time span changes.